measurement of functional T1 and gray matter thickness changes during brain activation at 70. Thank you. I have nothing to disclose. There are basically two popular MRI strategies, so-called anatomical, like T1 mapping, which looks pretty, but it takes forever to acquire it. On the other hand, we have VPI, which is super fast, but doesn't look so pretty. So let's just combine them to get one ultimate method, T1 EPI, with EPI speed, but looking pretty. You think that makes sense? Come to screen number three to find out more. With EPI speed, we get two complete brain volumes within a single inversion recovery curve of fantastically three seconds. Pushing it through an MP2 rage-like block model, we obtain beautiful T1 maps in physical units of milliseconds. Wondering how we do it? Come to screen number three to be amazed. Do you ever feel bored waiting for slow T1 maps? Your problems are solved with T1 EPI. Come to screen number three and see how T1 EPI gives you several nice averages before conventional methods just give you the first few lines. Do you ever feel disappointed because you can't track anatomical changes of the brain faster? Just come to screen number three and you'll see how you can track them in real time while they're developing every three seconds. Come and be amazed to see how neural activity increases T1 up to 100 milliseconds and see how cortical thickness seems to increase by 5% 5 within a few seconds. Do you ever struggle to get a decent EPI registration from anatomy? You should, because with EPI distortions, it doesn't always work. So just come to screen number three and see how T1 EPI solves all your problems. Come and be amazed to see how it gives you a perfectly fine T1 contrast with identical distortions as your favorite functional or diffusion protocol. So don't forget to come to screen number three right here behind that wall. I'll see you there. I love this session.